We are going to look at the policy language that is used in different um, vendors. So for Cisco, for policy control, if you want a complicated way to do this, you have what we call root maps. And a root map is like a program for iOS. It has line numbers, much as old programming languages used to have. And each line with its line number is a separate condition or action. And the concept is basically, if you match something, then do a particular expression and then exit. Else, if you match something else, then do this other expression and then exit. And then it continues on and on and on and on. The root map continue keyword allows you to apply more than one condition and actions inside one root map. It would be an expression that allows you to jump to the next line number and continue to do what is contained in both expressions. Now for Juniper, they have a policy framework which generally is used for both routing policy as well as firewall filtering. Now just like Cisco root maps, you have three main components. You have match conditions that select whatever you want to match. Then you have actions which are performed if the criteria match. Now these match conditions and actions are contained in terms. A term is an actual line or statement that contains those match conditions and the actions. Unlike iOS, they are not numbered. And the term does not define a default action since it does not contain a permit or deny keyword as part of its statement. So let's look at some sample root maps. Now, we have a couple of rules. For example, lines can have multiple set statements. And if that happens, all the set statements are implemented by that particular line. So you have root map space sample permit 10. And you have set community 300 colon 1 and set local preference 120. So anything that passes through this particular root map statement is going to have both the community set as well as the local preference. In this case, nothing is matched, so everything that is advertised will be matched by this statement. Alternatively, you can have multiple match statements, like match community one, match IP address prefix list, and then you give it a name. And in this case, all these conditions must match for the local preference to be set to 300. Some match statements can have multiple commands. In this case, at least one of the commands must match, and the slide shows you an example. So root map sample permit 10, you're matching IP address prefix list, my list, other list. What this means is match everything inside the prefix list, my list, or match everything that is inside the prefix list, other list. And if something is inside one of these prefix lists, set the community to 300 colon 10. If you have a root map, with just a match statement and no set statement, then any prefixes that is matching will go through and the rest are dropped. In this example, we have root map sample permit 10 and then match IP address prefix list my list. So for this statement, the action that's going to be done is the permit, which is up here at the top. If you had root map sample deny 10, then the action that would be done would be to deny everything that matches this prefix list. As we've mentioned before, if you have a line with only a set statement, all the prefixes will be matched and whatever you say in the set statement will be done. Any following lines are ignored. So in this example, root map sample permit 10 with set local preference 120, and then root map sample permit 20, set community 300 colon 5, the second root map statement will never, ever, ever be reached because everything will have the local preference set and then it will exit the whole root map. A line with a match and set statement and no following lines will have the default rule applied, which means everything which doesn't match what has been set will be dropped. So in this example, anything which doesn't match the prefix list my list is going to be denied. So 
Let's look at what this implies. If you omit the third line in this example, it means that prefixes that do not match list one or list two are going to be dropped because the root maps have an implicit deny all. In this case, you want to match things in list one, set 120, match things in list two, set a preference of 80, and then everything else will go through the default 100. If you don't have the third line, then it will not only not set the local preference, but it will actually drop the prefix. And this is an example of how you would actually apply this to the BGP session. Now to do AS path filtering, we have already showed you how to use a filter list. But in some cases, besides just filtering the list, maybe you want to set a local preference as well. This slide shows you how to do it. So instead of applying a filter list, you apply a root map in the inbound direction. And then you say permit 10, and then you match an AS path of 1, which will match the AS path access list 1. And then you set a local preference to 80. Then if you match AS path 2, you set the local preference to 200. This is an example of how you would use this particular concept to do prepend. You have a root map, set path, permit 10, and it's applied in the outbound direction towards a neighbor. It does not have a match statement, so it's going to match everything. And then you have set AS path prepend, and then the AS numbers that you want to prepend. If you do this, make sure you use your own AS number when prepending. Otherwise, you can mess with the BGP loop detection and some ASNs will be dropped because you are prepending the wrong autonomous system number. The slides that talk about communities show you how to match communities and this slide also gives you an example of how you'd match a community and then set a local pref. For community lists, because you can have more than one entry inside a community list, you have to remember that if you have a prefix that belongs to 150 colon 3 and 200 colon 5, then it will set the local preference to 50. Otherwise, if it belongs to only 88 colon 6, you're going to set the local preference to 200. If there's no other condition, then anything which doesn't match any of these conditions is going to be dropped. When you have multiple values in the same community list statement, there's a logical AND between them. If you have multiple values in separate community list statement, a logical OR condition is between each statement. For example, if you have IP community list 1, as shown in the example, permit 150 colon 3 space 200 colon 5, then both these communities must exist. If you have IP community list 1, permit 150 colon 3, and then IP community list 1, permit 200 colon 5, then either of these could match. And this is an example configuration that shows using this. We've mentioned the continue keyword, and this is a way you could do some bit of set statements if it matches a condition, and then other bit of statements that match other conditions. And this slide shows you how to do it. So the continue 30 will skip the permit 20 line and jump down to line 30 where you have a match for group 3 where you're sending a prepend of 100, 100. So permit 20 is only run for lists, prefixes which do not match group 1 and they match group 2. In this case, you're setting the community no export. For Juniper policy languages, you have it configured under the policy options. And this is an example of how you do a root filter. And you'd say policy options, you have a policy statement, you give it a name, and then you have different terms. So term, some prefixes, and then you dis inside the term, you specify which prefixes you want to match. So you have a from keyword, and then different root filters. As mentioned in the previous video, you can have an action on a particular root filter. So you say have root filter 000 slash 0, exact, reject. 
and this will reject the default root. It will not continue processing these terms. Then you have root filter 192 slash 8 up to 24 and root filter 193 slash 8 prefix length range 1220 and you don't have an action on these two root filters. So if something matches either one of these two root filters, it's going to go to the then clause and apply the preference of 200 and then it will accept. Then you have a term default deny which has a then reject. Remember that for Juniper, the default policy is dependent on the routing protocol. So for BGP, the default policy is to announce everything that is inside BGP. This slide shows you how you'd actually do an AS regex configuration. So for example, you have uh, autonomous system number 1800 who's your neighbor or further down the line and you want to match everything that they originate. So you'd have AS path, you give it a name, and then you put a regex, which is dot star space 1800. Then you have a policy statement, which is any name, and then you have a term, filter ASs, and then you have from AS path, and then you put the same name in red, as we've seen, as you had up there that you named. And then you can set a preference to 10. Now to apply it to a BGP session, you have protocols BGP and then you can say export and then the outer policy out to export that named policy and this will apply it to everything, every BGP session. Now Juniper BGP requires that each neighbor is inside a group. So you have a group for upstreams and this could be type external and you have an export and import statement. The export statement all dash upstreams dash out will override the global export outer policy out in red. Then you have a neighbor 172.16.2.2 with an import policy, import dash example. This will override the green import incoming dash upstreams policy. Next you have a neighbor without a particular policy applied and this means that they shall use the import policy for the group and the export policy for the group since those both will override the outer BGP policy.